in the alchemical tradition, we're not only aware of these diagrams, which are actually diagrams of the body, we're also aware of those who practice these dark arts, if you may, or distorted arts, that's our term, just taking the ancient knowledge and creating things based on those fundamentals. And since nobody really knows about this stuff anymore, it's no longer important. ASAT Rocky's lyrics are more important than this to most beings. They miss the play. The play is, is to create a world inside of our mind. In our minds is the ultimate real estate. <laughs> to get space in your mind to build their projector and creations because it's a point-to-point -point system. Once you start thinking like them, you project that on somebody else, that person, and then it, it confirms. So that's like, a, it's a light system. I confirm to you that this exists because I believe it exists and because I believe it exists, I confirm to another that is also linked to me that it exists. So this is how worlds are created. So that says a lot, though. I, I won't say right now we'll be able to convince everybody that the vir virus does not exist. The adept knows that that's folly to try to believe that you could change the masses' mind. But we're talking about your mind. We just need to give you the keys and the fundamentals to how to create the new world inside of your mind. This is why they wanted like, oh, the new world order and blah, 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 blah. And they just deluge everybody with that. That's what a deluge is. It's not a water thing. The deluge was not of water. It was information. There would be so much information that will come out. People would just get deluge. That's the deluge from this time. So now when we say a new world order, that now is hinted at something external to be a construct that they want to set up outside with the governments where they want to hinder everyone. But in the ancient tradition, a new world order would be you coming from your Cossacks all the way to, to the, the front door of your own pineal gland, knocking on, and not knocking on the door, hell, kicking in the door and taking what was on the throne and slamming it down back to its place. Okay, let's look again. Because all the classic mythos already contain this, but our ancestors encrypted this in forms of art. And that way we would stare at the art for a long time in our mind's eye. And then we would see the truth. So on the left, you see this ram headed being. And his head is on the back of another being. Now I've watched many occultists try to decipher this and it's a mess. This is very simple. Do you see inside of the brain, again, in the superior brachium, you will see something that looks like horns. This is the chauffeur. This is basically the, the ancient laws, which uh, Pierre uh, Sabak had decrypted again, which is that there is the, the serpents. I believe that's the serum. And then there is, let's say, the bovids. This is basically the rams and the serpents. That is the genetics that is being used to create human being 3.0 foundation one. Rams and serpents. And if you look in all the occult traditions, either they're killing some snake or they're burning some cows. <laughs> it, to this very day, because this is, this is the two hemispheres of the brain again. This is the Inky and the Enlil. So this horned aspect of things is like what they call a two ball the two two double brain bible the double brain <laughs> and that being a form of sacrifice meaning that you sacrifice your entire life in duality <laughs> so now that we know what these symbols mean let me see one quick second uh something took my took one of the things out here okay wow wow give me one quick second one of my pictures disappeared. Actually, I just mentioned, I won't even pause here. So you saw the picture with the, the thing on the back of the head. Actually, here it is right here. Excuse me. The ram on the back of the head. Here we are. So do you see how to the neophyte, they'll have a whole nother, like it gets, he'll get thrown. That's why you got to stay the course. This would be easier to do if there wasn't duality in our minds all the time. Like 
I can show you proficiently, and maybe we'll get into this because we still have a few more days in the meditation. I can show you proficiently statues that are carved, even from the ancient times, that are all pieces of the body. And that it was facts that they wasn't just making these sculptures and spending all this time doing this for the love and gratification of somebody else. They were allowing their bodies to match with where their minds were. Like when I created a sculpture of the great arcana, I was only confirming externally what I knew within. And so when you would see this on the back, what he would say is, hey, man, <laughs> actually, who you really are is right behind you. And every single day, because you're looking through your two eyes, you're walking away from it. It becomes hard to see yourself because it's like your hand is so close to your face. If you put your hand really close to your, your eyes and you look, you can't see anything. So this is why you have a hard time seeing yourself because you're actually really on the back of your face. And when you use the third eye, the third eye, which they say the black dot, the third eye beat pings to the back of the skull, which is really your front. Somebody say, I got eyes behind my, I got an eye behind my head. <laughs> this then, it, this is very simple stuff. I, I don't want you to get like too flabbergasted with this. What I'm saying is, is that it's like a, pro, a projector in every single extent. Think about this. You see how the projector has this beam and I camera's a little off lensing here, but you see how the projector has this beam, right? And this beam, it comes in and then it hits and then it projects from there. So wherever the beam is lined up to is going to be the clarity of the picture. So what we're doing is we're working with, as alchemists, the focus. And all, this is, all these are meditative states, like the focus to where the consciousness, instead of projecting out into the front, which you can even do with your eyes closed, by the way. You can project into a dualistic mind and power on the dualistic structure. But there's another aspect of our consciousness here, which is either underdeveloped or burned out. And this is where the regeneration most of the time takes place when you go into the activation. It's the corpus callosum, which is tied into the neocortex, a new cortex, a new core, a new world, a new processor. As I said, a seven core, eight core, pinium processors. Okay, so this new frontal lobe, right, is tied in now to the neo, the, the neocortex and the corpus callosum. So callosum now, all of the other olfactories, they are not in rulership. They're not in leadership. Especially if you don't allow them to be. Now you rule from the center. This means a not, this is a non-judgmental approach. This is the only way to get into the deep mysteries because if you see something and you don't like it and you turn away right away, that's where they're hiding it then. That's what I found out. I was walking away from myself every day symbolically. Life starts with people walking out into the world to go and find something that is inside. So symbolically, yes, we are running from ourselves. Yes, all we need to do is stop. Focus, turn inside, turn yourself inside, and then gain the ability to utilize your projector. That is there. It is facts. I can show you this stuff in so many ways. We could go into little plants and open them up. We can go to Radio Larry and look at that. We can go and look into frequencies. We can go into cymatics. I can show you in so many different ways. And this is just one. And that's what alchemy is. Alchemy is the ability to see the blueprint within everything, because then you will gain the staff, which is the rod of Hermes. That's that, even that scepter that they had that has the three prongs of Shiva, that three rod scepter of Poseidon. They say that, that, that that's the thing to have. That's your protection from the gods, according to the mythos. This just means that it's the, it's the protection from the dualistic structure to know about the Trimurti to know about all three eyes, not just the two eyes that we're generally using, to realize that until then one will be imprisoned, not through chains that you could not break, but through a perception. And that's why the ancient text says, no longer can one come to save them. 
they must save themselves because the enemy they will face will be within their own minds. So this is the last testament, basically, meaning the last test before you graduate the university and get out. This is the last test. The last test that comes to you is you yourself. No matter where we go, the greatest monsters will come from us. We still have not put into its place. And to remember, as all things are all as all things are, all those things that you see, the great wild beasts, that's just a fuel supply for where we come from. Anything that exhibits itself as having a lot of exertion, a lot of power and a lot of force, you become a battery where we're from. Because that will get you only so far. You need to learn how to move without motive. Which is to be in the current of life, to know these mysteries and to know, to truly know them. It's like you can say them. It's like a, like a thicker. It's like counting beads. I can roll this story consistently of where creation comes from. And no matter where you, where you can display, I can break it down and build it back up. Right. And then what you're doing is, is you're, you're focusing this power. So that way, when you detach. Which, you know, sometimes I just detach. You're going in a realm, something's going on with the cosmos, you just detach. Now you can't actually, you know, you're just not in this world, really. You're somewhere else. Now you need to learn how to operate there. You need to learn how to stop everything and then become the Lord and the master of that world so you can become the Lord and master yourself. It's very simple. In the film, well, to do it is not simple, but it's very simple to comprehend. In the film Superman, they show the last one, the last one. They show that they send this baby basically to earth. This baby gets here and his baby's having issues for one primary reason. The senses are so heightened that the world stimulus is overwhelming. And I just want you to take that right there because that is the key. All that Kal-El and all that stuff they're talking about. That's, that's just a remake once again of the story of the Agigi. It's just explaining that you have so much power that w the world is overwhelming. Do you know what a cricket sounds like? Do you know what monkeys really feel like when you're using your third eye and they're coming through? Do you know what these realms and frequencies and spectrums are really about? How powerful they really are? No, because you're a bit governed. You have your body to step that down for you. That is like natural shielding. It's like what we talked about yesterday. It, you start forming fields around yourself so you don't perceive as much as you used to perceive. So that way you can get into a consciousness. That's what you're doing. You're getting into a consciousness. You're getting into a spectrum and frequency. But then after you settle in, you learn how to use some of these faculties. Now you would start easing up these governors. You'll start easing up on yourself about what you think is real <laughs> and what you think the truth is. And, and all of these, why do you even need to be thinking? And why do you have to always know it? And so you start being able to open up the field. And just like a fish, the bigger your tank is, the bigger the fish gets. The more you're able to expand the reality that's around you with facts and the awareness of who you truly are. I'm only showing you yourself. I didn't come bring some God to you, some crying God. I bought you yourself. And yes, you're on the cross right now. Come down from that cross. <laughs> all, those, all these stories are all stories about you. That's what makes them so dangerous when it becomes about somebody else. Because that somebody else ain't you. Not really, none of I here really looks like Jesus, to be honest. So that excludes all y'all. So this is all about you inside. Come down off that cross. But remember, who was on the cross? Who was on the side on the cross in the mythos? The thieves. Ah, it was the thieves over here. Always stealing, stealing you, stealing your ideas. Now, this word still is interesting because it seems to hint that you're moving. Remember still, S-T-I-L-L, -L, meaning not moving. Okay, so with the, where this mystery is tied in, because this is just the whole riddle of the earth's 
the damn riddle is riddler language, right? It means that if you cannot steal your mind, somebody already stole it. So every time an idea comes from one of the hemispheres, it steals the attention. And the focus is diverted from the central beams and then starts to plunge you into a world. As we say, a world, W-H-I-R-L, a world, a vibration, a frequency, a spiral. And then, like I said, just like jumping on the internet, if you don't know how to gain your course in all of that, like a course is a curve. So if you don't know how to gain your own course in that, then you get dizzy. And then you start perceiving an illusion, not the way things really are. And then you become lost for a time. And what we're all here to do is to each leg on the path to stretch out our arms. That's what we agreed to do. I stretch out my arms so that way if somebody is there and they're grabbing me, I'm holding them and I'm holding another person and they're stretching out their arms and we're creating in the abyss a foundation. 